Um, so you ask these next couple questions gonna be regarding esports, mobility, okay. and adaptive sports. Um, and if, let me know if you ever need a break or anything like that. So, yeah. Um, as an individual with SCI, what are the day-to-day -day mobility accessibility problems you run into during the course of your day that you think could be helped with technology? So this is for mobility, esports, and Ad adaptive sports. Okay. So let me just start from a let me just start from an esports perspective, and then. If you don't mind, after the question, just remind me to do the mobility and then the adapt course because I can think of ways for all three. Yeah, also. of course. And then you can even do um, generally. Yeah, so I mean, I also do esports right now, first of all. So um, as a kid growing up, you know, in the kind of the video game days, I always play video games growing up, whether it be Xbox, PlayStation 2, Xbox 360. And getting hurt. Um, I've never been able to play a video game since. My my fingers don't work. I don't have any um, movement in them, so I'm not able to grip a controller. I'm not able to click any buttons. I'm not able to even turn the Xbox on for that for that matter. So I feel that technology could really help me for with esports in many ways. One, it could help me. It could help simplify the controller into ways that. I could potentially use it, potentially ma making the big buttons bigger, m easier to hit, um, maybe making a mouth joystick, or potentially doing something with a touch screen, which is something that works very well for me. Um, but another thing for esports is, I think if they make something with kind of like head movements and eye contact as well, I think that could potentially go a long way for people with you know, uh, disabilities and whatnot for esports because, you know, disabilities range from someone paralyzed just from the waist down to all the way to, you know, their neck down so they can't really move much. I'm blessed with what I have. Uh, mobility wise technology, like every day I go in and out my back door, I have a clicker on my wheelchair. That opens my back door is pretty much a garage clicker, and without that, I wouldn't be able to get in and out of my house without the assistance of someone else. So, technology gives me the assistance that I need from a person, while still giving me the feeling of being independent and going throughout my day independently. And you know, being a college student, sometimes when I go to class and whatnot. Um, Many of the classroom doors aren't really accessible. You can't hit a button to open them, as you know. So I usually have to wait for another student in the class to open the door for me and let me in. So that would be something that technology could help me with, just uh, socially and being more aware in the community of where those kind of handicap accessible button should be placed because yeah I can hit the button to get into the building but I can't hit the button to get into my actual classroom which I feel is kind of more important than getting into the building um, and other things like technology I use a Hoyer lift to get out of bed every day so you know I'm 155 pounds I'm a lot I'm kind of heavy for my mom and my dad who are you know older people and same with my nurse so in order for no one to have to strain their back, I use a Hoyer lift, I use a sling, get out of bed, and it carries me from the bed to my wheelchair and vice versa. So technology helps me um, tremendously with my mobility all throughout the day. How about uh, adaptive sports? So adaptive sports, like I said, I, I played hockey uh, growing up, and I would still love to play hockey now if I could. Obviously I can't, but I feel that there are ways for adaptive sports. Um, one way that I've seen that I feel that technology could make an advancement is, yeah, I can't move my hands or anything, but I could use my hands to drive and I could put a stick, uh, some sort of stick at the bottom of my chair. And that, that could make it so I could hit the puck when it's on the ground or some big ball, whether it may be. Or maybe even building some sort of makeshift custom glove that way, hands that aren't able to grip a stick can, or maybe making some games that are, I guess, 
more open and accept for people with disabilities. Uh, I'm really not not sure, but I would love to. I would love to try it. Very cool. So the next following questions are going to be uh, regarding social connectivity and uh, okay. communication. Uh, first one is, what are the biggest limitations to participation that you see in the social connectivity and communications field for people with SEI, and how can we improve it? Or if you need me to repeat it again, let me yeah. know. The, the, the hardest thing? The biggest limitations um, to participation that you see in social connectivity and the communications field for people with SEI. Well, one thing I'll say, and this kind of has to go back to the mobility stage, uh, just being able to communicate with people, being a, a young person and wanting to maybe go out to a bar or somewhere, or go out to nice to eat, there's usually stairs at the restaurant or stairs, you know, wherever I go, or whether it just be an office building for that matter. Um, I can't get upstairs because my wheelchair is 300 some odd pounds with me sitting in it. and. That's a lot to carry in. I would never make anyone carry that. So that's probably the biggest limitation I see. And I find that also people with SEI aren't able to raise their voices as much. Um, I know I certainly have that problem because I have a lack of a diaphragm due to where my injury level is. So in loud places, um, if I need help and I try to ask someone, it's so loud in the place, um, they're not able to hear me. Uh, it, it's, it is a big limitation, especially when you need something to be done urgently, potentially. Um, the next question is, uh, if you could solve only one problem in social connectivity and communication for SEI, what would it be? So one problem, what's the biggest one that you think um, that should be solved? The, the ability to get into you know, places that someone with s in a wheelchair can't like let's let's say a beach for example i can't get on a beach in my wheelchair in my sand in the sand because my wheelchair would just sink in heck i got stuck in the dirt when i was walking my dog this weekend so i would get stuck in the sand and that's just a place where the general public loves to go it's an amazing place but being in a wheelchair, having SCI, we are not able to get there as well as there. there's many other public places too, whether it be, uh, I don't know, an, an amusement park for, for an example. There's many rides and things that people with SCI aren't able to get on, which makes, makes things difficult and hard to, it's hard to enjoy a lot of things when you're not able to uh, do everything to the fulfillment that everyone else is doing it and to the measure that you want to do it by. Perfect. Um, so last two questions. Um, in your role at the Reef Foundation, how have, you, how have you seen social connectivity and communication for the SCI community improve as technology improves? So I've seen it improve greatly. Um, when I first got hurt, what I have, I had the tiny iPhone 4 and um, it was a very small screen the touch screen wasn't very good uh, partially because I cracked it up but just with the advancement of technology and the iPads now becoming better and greater it's enhanced my not only my ability but people with social uh, SEI and disabilities ability to be able to reach out to people and communicate because we're not able to touch buttons, uh, to click buttons. So if, say I had a Blackberry for, for example, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to click any of those buttons. So now that it's a touch screen and with the, like I said, the inventions of the iPad, bigger screens, now it makes it easier for someone like myself to be able to click the touch screen, click the buttons. That's how I take all my notes in class. That's how I connect with all my friends um, that's probably the biggest way, just the advancement of, I guess, phones and iPads, and even now there's computers that are touchscreen, which makes it very easy for someone like myself, instead of having to use Dragon or voice-activated computer, and not having the privacy 
to type out what you want to type out because you have to speak it out, you can now actually type it out on the laptop by using a touchscreen, which is a really cool advancement in technology, which, and I think technology has gone a far away, and I think there's still ways to go with it. Uh, for the last question is, uh, what is the future of social, social connectivity and communication for people with SEI? I, I think the future is anything that we, we want to make it. Honestly, I think if we put our resources and our minds in the right spot and gave people with disabilities the opportunity and the chance to participate and live a full life as much as possible, more than they are now, it'll open many eyes and many doors. I think that the future is, I think our disability could possibly become an ability. I think that there's not going to be, do you want to go to the beach? Oh, I can't. It's going to be, all right, yeah, they got they got the match right on there, so let me go to the beach. I'll be able to sit right with you guys. You know, the future might be, uh, do you want to go on the top deck? Oh, yeah, let me just go around back. There's a ramp, or maybe there's an elevator there. I, I think the future... The future has endless opportunities, and I'm very excited to see what the future holds for us. So that was the last question, but do you have any other final statements or any pieces that you want to add in there? Um, yeah, I want to say that technology has significantly helped me as an individual. Um, as a person that doesn't have much independence because I'm not able to do things for myself, such as feed myself or give a have a drink for myself. Um, technology gives me so much assistance that I never thought was possible. Like I said, going in and out of doorways in my house because I have the buttons on the wall as well as having the buttons on my chair. That's given me a feeling that I never thought that I would get back when I was initially injured. And technology has given me that chance. And I think that there's so many more chances that technology will give me in the future. And that's just one among many. So I'm just excited to see the future.